News Talk 1070 KHMO presents On the Mark with Mark Hespin. News Talk 1070 KHMO presents On the Mark with Mark Hespin. On the Mark is powered by Cunis Country Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the tri-state area at 221 North 36th Street, Quincy. Faith, family, and giving back. That's Cunis Country. And now, here's Mark Hespin. Good morning, Tri-States, and wherever you may be listening on the News Talk 1070 KHMO app. This is On the Mark. I am Mark Hespin. Brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area. 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. You got to stop by the dealership this Labor Day weekend and ask them about that no fear lifetime powertrain warranty on new and used vehicles. Tell them Mark sent you. ShopCunis.com if you're looking to uh, check out the inventory online. Just go to ShopCunis.com. Welcome in on this historic episode 200 of On the Mark. It's our 200th episode. Kudos to us uh, and on this uh, September 2nd. It is September. Football is in the air. And we are finalizing our four-week saga of me predicting every single division, giving you the records, letting you know what I think is going to happen in the NFL. Uh, so we can finalize that today with the AFC and NFC North. We're going to spend a bulk of the show on that. As always, reach out to me on Twitter, on Instagram, at Mark Hespin, M-A-R-K-H-E-S-P-E-N, broadcasting live here in our KHMO studios in beautiful Quincy. It's going to be a gorgeous, hot, Final send off to summer day in the tri state. So hopefully it's nice wherever you may be listening. Maybe it's on the uh, News Talk 1070 KHMO app, which is free. Download it, get it on your phone. Uh, besides the AFC and NFC North, we'll talk a little Ryder Cup. We'll talk some college football. And I will give you a prediction to look out for for Lions Chiefs opening game of the NFL season because a week from now we'll be able to. Uh, Talk about that game. What happened in that game? Who's one to know? Who's zero and one? And uh, we'll get to all that uh, at the very end of the show. Right now, let's get this puppy started with a giant breakdown of the AFC North. It's Hespin headline number one. Hespin's headlines on the mark. Who do I think is going to win the AFC North division? The black and blue AFC North. The 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 division of hardcore rivalries the Steelers and the Ravens and the Bengals and the and the Browns the Battle of Ohio well I think who's going to win the AFC North I think it's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals and I'm taking them at 12 and 5 with a record of 12 and 5 to win the AFC North one thing I want to focus on with the Bengals obviously is the Joe Burrow injury is something we got to keep our eye on to start the season but the Bengals had a Joe in- Joe Burrow injury last year to start the season with that appendectomy he was recovering from. Remember, he threw like five picks in the opener. And then the year before that, he's coming off of the major knee surgery in a slow start. And the year before that, he was a rookie. So Joe Burrow has never had a clean camp, and it hasn't really affected him yet at all in his NFL career. Imagine what... He's going to do when he has a good, clean camp and he's healthy throughout camp. Uh, he, he probably will win an MVP. So I'm not panicking about it, but it is something to keep an eye on, especially with not exactly the easiest start to the season. You're on the road at Cleveland, home against Baltimore, home against the Rams. But realistically, if you look at this Bengals schedule, it's very, very workable. Non-division games – you get the Rams at home. You have to go to to Tennessee and Arizona. Um, those should be easy wins for a talented Bengals team. The Tennessee travel is nothing. Arizona's in full tank mode. And then you have Seattle at home before a bye week, week seven. Don't love the early bye, but the Bengals get the bye before they have to go on a tough two-game stretch so they can reset, get healthy, to go at San Francisco for a physical game before coming home against Buffalo. Then Houston at home, uh, on the road at Baltimore, home against Pittsburgh at Jacksonville. That's a tough break. They had to go to Jacksonville. But then they get a nice little break in their schedule with home games against Indianapolis, against Minnesota, 
And to wrap up the year, that big December 31st matchup with Kansas City on the road uh, with uh, games against Cleveland and Pittsburgh on either side of it. It's a workable schedule for Joe Burrow and the Bengals. And I'll just say this. How I feel right now about Joe Burrow is 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 how I feel a little bit about the AFC West when I talked about it last week with Patrick Mahomes. At this point in time, I think it's stupid to doubt Joe Burrow. It's stupid to say that him and this Bengals team won't be there at the end until we see it happen because it's been his division and him being the best quarterback in the division uh, for the past two years, and I think that is going to continue. I don't see any reason why it's not going to continue. They have a really workable stretch of games. I can see them getting to 12 wins. Yeah, they may drop a, a big game here or there. Uh, I don't know if the Bengals are um, 100% Super Bowl cal- caliber. I mean, Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, a ton of weapons on offense. I really do like the offensive line, Orlando Brown Jr., Ted Karras, the center, Alex Kappa, the right guard. Defensively, it's not great. I mean, Sam Hubbard is is a, is a star. Trey Henderson is a very good player. Um, Nick Scott, the safety in the back end. Uh, but they aren't star-riddled on defense. I think this Bengals team is going to be very good. I think they're going to win their division. And it wouldn't shock me if, once again, they are playing for an AFC championship title, uh, either at Arrowhead or maybe at home. Uh, let's move on. Second place in the AFC North, I have the Baltimore Ravens. And I have the Ravens coming in second place in the AFC North with a record of 10-7. and seven. A lot of things I like about the Ravens, including the fact that they overhauled their weapons in the offseason. Obviously, Lamar Jackson got paid. I think that's going to help Lamar Jackson. Sometimes you worry about when guys get paid, like Kyler Murray. It's like, well, now they got to build in clauses of like don't spend too much time on video games I think Lamar is the type of guy that we what we saw with him pre getting paid except for last year was a dude who's all in all about football wants to win and now that he's gotten paid and he has that generational money and wealth and it's guaranteed it's locked up I think you're going to see a Lamar Jackson who's going out there and now realizes the next big thing I need to do is win in the playoffs get myself another MVP and uh, and build up my career stats and my legendary career and start working towards what it means to be a, an all-time great quarterback. And I think Lamar is that type of self-motivated guy. The money, I think, is going to help. And obviously, really love J.K. Dobbins, Rashad Bateman, Odell Beckham Jr., Zay Flowers. It's a really nice wide receiver core. Uh, Mark Andrews, one of the best tight ends in the game. Ronnie Staley, the right, the left tackle, is one of the best in the business. Linderbaum, the center. I like their offensive line. The defense doesn't have the names that you're used to up front, but you still have great linebackers with maybe the best linebacker of the game, Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Marlon Humphrey on the back end. Justin Tucker is a weapon. I love, obviously, Harbaugh as a coach. And again, the, the Ravens got some scheduling breaks. They get Detroit at home. They get Seattle at home. They don't have to travel far for that. They get Miami at home late in the year. Um, they do have to go to San Francisco. They do have to go to Jacksonville. They do have to go to the Chargers. Those are tough matchups out of division. I think the Ravens team will have some up and downs. I think they'll start a little slow um, as far as, as figuring all this out offensively, how it works. But there is a stretch in the season where they can stack wins I think 10 and 7 is a realistic uh, uh, mark for the Ravens. I think it, it, it will help secure a playoff berth for the Baltimore Ravens. And I think the Ravens are going to be that one of those wildcard teams that you absolutely are going to be kicking yourself for having to host the Ravens wildcard weekend as your team. No one's going to want to be able to do that. I think the Ravens will hit their stride towards the end of the year. I have the Pittsburgh Steelers third in the division at 9 and 8. One of the things with the Pittsburgh Steelers this year is I like the Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff. I like their stability as an organization. Um, I just don't yet have the confidence of knowing that Kenny Pickett is going to be able to dethrone the two guys ahead of him I just mentioned in Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. The highly motivated Lamar Jackson. You have Joe Burrow who hasn't gotten the big contract yet, who's looking to add a trophy to his case, an MVP to his name is going to be highly motivated, and he's got better weapons around him offensively. 
Um, I don't love the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive coaching staff. I love George Pickens. I, I, I love the uh, I love Najee Harris. Deontay Johnson is great. Allen Robinson is a third wide receiver. Uh, terrific. Pat Fryermuth, very nice tight end. Offensive line worries me a bit. I think it's a very average group offensive line. But obviously defensively when they're healthy, they're elite. Cam Hayward, TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, Minka Fitzpatrick, Joey Porter Jr. It's a very good defensive team. I think this team is going to be very much flirting with 500 all year long. Uh, they have a tough start to the season, hosting San Francisco, hosting Cleveland, um, two very physical games, a rivalry game with Cleveland, and maybe the best roster in the NFL with San Francisco to start. Uh, and then they have a little bit of a, okay, maybe they start 0-2, but then they have two very winnable games at Las Vegas, at Houston, get back to 2-2, two and two, home against Baltimore, maybe they fall below 500. Then they get to go to Los Angeles, maybe win a game. It's going to be up and down and up and down. They do have Jacksonville on the schedule, but they get them at home. They get Green Bay at home. They get New England at home. But at the very end of the year, as they're battling for a playoff spot, three of their last four on the road at Indianapolis, an Indianapolis team that will get better as the year goes on. They then have to play Cincinnati, at least play that game at home. But then at Seattle at Baltimore to wrap up the year. Tough end-of-the-year schedule for the Steelers as they're going to be battling for a playoff spot. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers will be right on that line, 9-8. and eight. A nice year from Kenny Pickett, but I think we're going to start to see what Kenny Pickett is in that ceiling, a little bit of some sophomore slumps at times. Offensive and, uh, excuse me, defensive coordinators are going to have plenty of film to start game planning for Kenny Pickett, what he does well, what he doesn't do well. And I don't love the offensive coaching staff for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think they're dynamic with their play calling, with their play design, with an okay offensive line. A lot of good weapons, but Kenny Pickett is fast. He's got some straight line speed. Reminds me of Alex Smith a bit. But he's not exactly extend the play fast speed twitch behind an offensive line. Finally, fourth place in the AFC North, I have the Cleveland Browns at 7-10. and 10. One of my biggest struggles with the Cleveland Browns um, and trying to predict them uh, and, and what is going to happen with them as a season is the fact that even though we saw a lot of Deshaun Watson last year, none of it looked right. None of it looked cohesive. None of it was um, the consistent, explosive Deshaun Watson we saw three years ago. Um, I also think there's just bad juju around this town, a team. I think teams and owners, if you ask them, if you truth serum them, GM's owners, they don't want Cleveland to succeed. They don't want Cleveland to be a success story with a fully guaranteed contract with quarterback. They want Cleveland to lose. And listen, Cleveland's got some nice pieces. Nick Chubb is one of the best running backs in the league. An okay, solid wide receiver core. Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Donovan Peoples-Jones. David Njoku is a very solid tight end. They do have a good offensive line. Joe Batonio, the guard. Wyatt Teller, the guard. Conklin, the tackle. And then defensively, Miles Garrett might be the best defensive player in football. Zadaria Smith, they're going to be able to rush the passer. Denzel Ward and Newsom in the back end. They have some pieces I just don't love the vibes around the team. I think that the, the 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 league and the other teams know that Cleveland has a target on their back since going and doing the Deshaun Watson deal. Um, I think they have a very tough schedule to start. They have to play Cincinnati and Pittsburgh plus Tennessee and Baltimore all within the first four weeks. I, it wouldn't shock me if they're 1-3 in three or 0-4 oh in four heading into their bye week, which is a brutal early bye week, week five. After the bye, they have to play San Francisco. That's a tough draw. Uh, they get a little bit of a break with at Indianapolis, but then they have to go all the way to Seattle. And late in the year, they have Jacksonville, Chicago, the Jets, and the, J and the Bengals is four of their last five games in December. That's brutal. All of those teams I expect to be uh, competing for playoff spots, battling for the playoffs, and the Browns have to pl have to play 
the Jags, the Bears, the the Jets, and the Bengals with a trip to Houston smushed in there. You know, they're lucky if they go two and three down the stretch. I think it's a tough sledding for the Browns. I have the Browns at seven and ten. I don't have them competing for the playoffs. Part of that is I I got to be honest, I have no desire to root for the Browns. I have no wanting or need or feeling of of positivity towards the Cleveland Browns. And I also didn't get any positive vibes from the way their season ended last year, thinking it was going to launch into a bigger year. They don't have Kareem Hunt. I think the running game is a little less dynamic. And I think that offensively, the wide receiver weapons with Njoku, they're going to rely a lot on Deshaun Watson. And I just don't know if he has it. And I know that the league is out to get them. All right. That is my AFC North prediction. You're listening on the Mark News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai. I have the Bengals winning it 12 and 5, the Ravens 10 and 7, the Steelers 9 and 8, and the Browns 7 and 10. Um, the Steelers, I think, will be right there in the mix for one of those last wild card spots. Um, it wouldn't shock me if the Steelers find a way to sneak in, but there's a lot of depth in the AFC. When you look at the AFC as a whole and you're trying to build a playoff picture, you're looking at teams fighting for those wild card spots, in my opinion, those kind of final wild card spots. You look at like Pittsburgh. I like them a little bit more than New England. Okay. But do I like them as much as Miami and the Jets? I, I trust Miami's skill positions and their depth more than Pittsburgh. I obviously trust Aaron Rodgers more than Kenny Pickett with the Jets. I don't think they're as good as the Bengals and the Ravens in their own division. Um, I I certainly think they're better than anyone in the AFC South not named the Jaguars. And uh, in the AFC West, I don't like them as much as the Bron- uh, as much as the Chiefs and the Chargers. But they're I think they're better than the Broncos, and I think they're better than the Raiders. So they're going to be right on that tough line of seven teams to get in the Steelers will be battling throughout the season all right um when we come back we're going to dive into the NFC North who do I like to win the NFC North what do I think about my Chicago Bears all of that on the way don't go anywhere come back a short break it's on the mark news talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app now today are living with a disability. I'm one of them. People with disabilities are extremely talented, resilient problem solvers that have so much to offer. And we've got a trusted ally on our side, an organization we can rely on, Easter Seals. Easter Seals is leading the way to full equity, inclusion, and access to health care, employment, and education for people with disabilities, families, and communities. That's my Easter Seals. Make it yours. Learn more and get involved at EasterSeals.com. 1070 KHM Welcome on back to On the Mark here on News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO app. Brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. They are all about buying your vehicle. If you're trying to sell your vehicle, whether it's uh, just an old car to sit in the garage anymore you don't use, whether grandma stopped driving and so now you got to take her car and sell it and get some get a check for it, whether you uh, you have an empty dester or just moved out and now they don't need the, the childhood car you bought for them, whatever it is, you want to offload a car, don't go to Facebook Marketplace and have to deal with creepy dudes messaging you at like 2 in the morning to come by your house. Go straight to Cunis Honda Hyundai. They have checks ready, waiting. They will pay top dollar. They are buying vehicles. The buying center of the Tri-States, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. Tell them Mark sent you. All right. Has been headline number two. Let's talk about it. The NFC North. Hespin's headlines on the mark. All right. I know a lot of people are waiting for me to talk the NFC North. And I've been very much purposely saving the NFC North for last. So um, here we go. Who is winning the NFC North? Drum roll, please. The Detroit Lions. I am going with the Detroit Lions to win the NFC North over my Chicago Bears. Yes, yes, I'm going with the Lions over the Bears. One of the things that I think the Lions have going for them over the Bears, the Vikings, and the Packers in the NFC North, they have the least amount of question marks going into this year. Everything, there's an answer for everything. And while no, 
Is this a Super Bowl roster with a Super Bowl head coach and a Super Bowl pedigree organization? No, 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 no. But do they have a really nice offensive line? Penny Sewell, uh, Taylor Decker, Frank Ragnow, uh, Jonah Jackson, a really, really solid offensive line. Yes, they do. Do they have really dynamic weapons on the outside? Amon Ross St. Brown, Marvin Jones Jr., Jamison Williams. Yes, they do. They have two really dynamic game breaker running backs. The excuse me, the rookie Jameer Gibbs, and then uh, the first round pick, and obviously David Montgomery, the former Chicago Bear. They have the best quarterback in the division to start the year. Now, I think when the when the year is over, I have a feeling we'll talk about someone else being the best quarterback in that division. But to start the year. And to, and to going into it, one of the top five quarterbacks in the NFC and the, the most reliable, best starting quarterback in the NFC North to start absolutely in Jared Goff. They do. We know who Jared Goff is. Uh, the tight end position is weak, Sam Laporta. Uh, but they have a very nice defense they're building with Aiden Hutchinson, Alex Anzalone, uh, Jack Campbell, the rookie linebacker. Um, really like, uh, CJ Gardner Johnson on the back end as well. I love Dan Campbell. I think people bought into it. I don't think it's crazy that the the Detroit Lions can get to 11 games. One, 11 and six. That's when I'm picking the Lions. Here's how that breaks down. I think the Lions go 2-0 and against the Packers. I think the Lions go 2-0 and against the Vikings. I think they split with the Bears. They find their way to get to... Uh, four, five and one in division. That's a, that's really helpful. Yeah, they have a tough game at Kansas City to start, but beyond that, they get Seattle at home. They get Atlanta at home. Then they go to Green Bay. I think that's three wins in a row after maybe a loss to Kansas City. And if they're able to upset Kansas City, the Lions could be four and zero oh, heading into a Week Five matchup at home against Carolina. The Lions can get off to a hot, hot start. They get Seattle at home, Atlanta at home. They have to go to Green Bay. Who cares? Then they have Carolina, Tampa, all in the first six weeks. The Lions could be six and zero, five and one, four and two at worst. A hot start for the Lions. Then maybe a tough game at Baltimore. So what? They drop that game. They get the Raiders at home. Pick up another win there. Heading into a bye week to go to the Chargers. I like them against the Chargers post by. I think they'll be very competitive. Wouldn't shock them if they win that game. They host the Bears on Sunday, November nineteenth. That could certainly be a win. They host the Packers. I think they're going to go two and zero against the Packers. I think they're a more physical team. I think they're a better roster. I think they have a better quarterback. I think they have better weapons, and they're at home. I absolutely think the pa- the, uh, the uh, Lions can win that game Thursday. Uh, that is uh, Thanksgiving against the Packers. Tough game at New Orleans at Chicago. Maybe they drop one or two there, going a little skid. But then they have a home game against Denver at Minnesota at Dallas, home against Minnesota to wrap it on up. The Lions, I think, absolutely are capable of getting into 11 wins. They may not look like the best team in the division at times, but I think they are the best bet in the division. They're the most solid team in the division. They're the most... um, they're the team in the division with the least amount of question marks, and they have a very workable schedule. They can stack wins early, build that confidence, and then, yes, later in the season they have a couple stumbles. They can still back their way into 11 wins, win the division. I'm not saying the Lions all of a sudden are going to be winning an NFC championship. Would it shock me if the Lions find their way into an NFC championship game? No. If you win your division on 11 wins in the NFC, you're probably going to host two playoff games maybe. And, and, and so you certainly could back your way into an NFC championship game. Um, but I think this Lions team is a really solid bet at 11 wins. I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think it's a hot take. I think there is a lot of positive vibes around the Lions, unlike their neighbors to the south in Cleveland. I like the Lions to win the NFC North at 11 and 6. All right. Who then will be in second place in the NFC North? Bear down Chicago Bears. I have the Chicago Bears at 10 and 7, a game behind the lines, 10 and 7. They come in second place in the NFC North. Um, the Chicago Bears, let's be honest, they are the obvious worst to first team. 
And I think they are, will be very competitive for the division. I want to, if I'm taking my Bears fandom hat off and I'm trying to look at them objectively, like I do with every other team except for the Browns, because it's just, again, bad vibes. I do believe there will be a game or two that Justin Fields misses. I mean, that's historically what's happened in his career. He's a freak athlete. That's going to lead to a tweaked ankle, a wrist, or something's going to get slightly banged up to where he might have to miss a week around the bye or something like that. And so I think that you have to prepare for that. I think, again, if I'm taking my Bears fandom hat off, I think there are still questions on the offensive line, even though it's it's greatly improved. Tevin Jenkins missing the first four is not great. Uh, but the offensive line is still very solid and improved. The wide receiver core and the weapons, a huge upgrade for them. A massive upgrade. I think that's going to make life way easier offensively in Chicago. Um, I also think that objectively, there are some tough games on this Bears schedule. And I don't love their ability to rush the passer consistently. And I think that um, I think that uh, the the the, uh, the front of the defensive of line is still a question mark for the Bears. And so that's me being objective, taking the Bears fandom hat off. Me is how I truly feel about the Bears. I think this Bears team could be a wild card team that ends up playing a deep deep playoff run. I think I think the Justin Fields and 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 more are going to have an, a heck of a season. I think Claypool is playing for a contract. He's going to have a heck of a season. Darnell Mooney is playing for a contract. All of these guys. Anytime there's a tweak injury, they're not sitting out. These are dudes that are playing for their NFL lives for big big money. They see the wide receiver money being thrown around. They want it, whether it's in Chicago or not. Darnell Mooney and Chase Claypool are playing for bleeping contracts. And they're going to play. They're going to put. They're going to work their butts off. They're going to put up big numbers. I think you're going to see great things from them with DJ Moore. It's an incredible wide receiver core. Uh, Cole Komet, Robert Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis. I don't love Cole Komet as just the one guy like he was last year. But when you, when you add Robert Tunyon, who is a weapon, and Mercedes Lewis, who is an extreme veteran, mo- most reliable dude in the NFL, year sixteen. I mean, a red zone threat, a blocking threat, and we'll we'll sneakily all of a sudden have a game where he catches four or five passes and a t- and a touchdown or two. I love the the tight end room for the Chicago Bears. And then yes, I think Braxton Jones, the left tackle, and Darnell Wright, the right tackle, both of them could develop into Pro Bowl tackles. Darnell Wright was absolutely the right pick for the Chicago Bears team. He looks like he could be a ten year All Pro type of dude. Um, Cody White here, Nate Davis. Really solid. Tevin Jenkins, got to get him off IR. But with Dan Feeney making the trade to able to have some flexibility, a starting caliber guard in the NFL to slip on in until Tevin Jenkins is healthy, this offensive line is in a much better spot. Defensively, yeah. Listen, Gervon Dexter Sr., Pickens, Justin Jones, Billings, those four guys, they're going to have to prove a lot to me. They they have inexperience. Uh, not a ton of numbers to, to rely on, and, and, and so that's going to be a question mark. But Yannick Ngakwe, Demarcus Walker, those are pros, pros. Can they uh, carry up their end of the bargain and give enough pressure to let the linebacking core fly around and be great? The Bears may have the third or fourth best linebacking core in the NFL with Tremaine Menmans, who may be the second or third best linebacker in the NFL TJ Edwards, who they stole from the Eagles. Jack Sanborn, who's a, a reliable stud of a, a player. Noah Sewell off the bench to believe some of these guys give depth. He's, ter- he's been terrific so far in camp and preseason. And then I love the back end of this Bears defense. Johnson, Brisker, Jackson, and Gordon. I think they're all very much capable of having a Pro Bowl season. I think the Chicago Bears team... We'll go as far as Justin Fields takes them. I think Justin Fields is going to have a mega year, and I cannot wait to watch this Bears team uh, get to 10 wins. How do they get to 10 wins? Well, it's a tough start to the season. Green Bay, Kansas City, Denver, three of their first four. They have uh, Tampa Bay in there, but it is on the road at Tampa. Can they find a way to, to go 2-2 two and two through that sledge? I think they can. 
Then the schedule opens up Washington, Minnesota, Vegas. I think the Bears are more explosive than the Vikings. I think defensively the Bears are better than the Vikings, and that game's at home. They're better than the Washington. I like them better than the Ravers, Raiders, and that's at home. There's a three-game win streak right there for them to get their confidence back. Tough games then at Los Angeles Chargers, at New Orleans Saints. But it bounces back then with three um, winnable games, Carolina at Detroit, at Minnesota, going into a late bye week. I love the late bye for the Bears. Post by the Bears can run the table. Home against Detroit, at Cleveland, home against Arizona, home against Atlanta, at Green Bay. The Bears go on a one, two, three, four, five game win streak to get to 10 wins, to end the year with a ton of momentum, beating up on bad opponents, home victories, a healthy Justin Fields and a Bears offense after the bye, going into the playoffs with a ton of momentum and shock the world type of stuff from the Bears. I have the Bears at 10 and 7. I have them making the playoffs, and I have them. Uh, let's just say shock in the world. We'll, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll do all that on social media later this week. All right, all right. Um, moving on. I have the Vikings also at ten and seven, and I have the Vikings also making the playoffs. I think the NFC North sends three teams to the playoffs this year. Why do I feel that way? Well, let's look at the NFC as a whole. As I've talked about the NFC, I have no faith in Dallas. I like the Eagles, and I I have no faith in the Commanders. The Giants will be borderline playoff team. The a- NFC South, besides the t- the Saints, I have winning the division. I don't see any of them getting to nine, ten wins to stack enough wins to make a playoff push. In the NFC West, I have the Rams winning it, and I have the Niners and the Seahawks battling. So it's to me, it's really between. I think the Eagles get in, and the Saints get in. They represent their divisions. And then I think the Lions get in, the Rams get in, they represent your divisions. And then you have Bears, Vikings, Niners, Seahawks battling for three spots. And I and I think that the Seahawks are the odd man out there. I like Bears, Vikings, Niners to get in. Seahawks are the odd man out. And so that's I it's just that's how I feel. And that means that leaves out the Giants as well, just on the outside looking into the playoffs. Um, here we go with the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, what do you like about the Minnesota Vikings? Well, you like the quarterback consistency, Kirk Cousins. He's in the final year of his contract. It seems as though this is Kirk Cousins' final year with Minnesota. And so I think Kirk Cousins is going to have a monster stat year. I think he's going to – him and Justin Jefferson are, are going to light up the world like they have been. Uh, Jordan Addison, KJ Osborne, really nice complimentary pieces – to Justin Jefferson. TJ Hawkinson just got paid. He'll be available. Offensive line scares me a bit. Darisaw, Bradbury, the center. I don't know if I trust O'Neal, the right tackle. And then defensively, Daniil Hunter, Tonga, you know, Byron Murphy Jr. in the back end, Harrison Smith. Don't love a lot of their defense. So I think they're going to give up a ton of points. I think they can score a ton of points. I think losing Dalvin Cook is going to be is going to be a hit to the offense. Alexander Mattinson is a nice player, um, but I don't think he's Dalvin Cook in his prime. The Vikings also don't have the easiest schedule in the world. Um, they have a nice start. They can start off the season with a W at home against Tampa. Then they have to go to Philly and home against the Chargers. So they could be one and two after week three. Then. They get a nice win against Carolina on the road at Carolina, but then they have Kansas City, Chicago, San Francisco. That's three losses in a row. Can they then bounce back at Green Bay? Could that be a four-game losing streak? Possibly. With then some winnable games, Atlanta, New Orleans, Denver, Chicago, before a late bye. Post-bye, again, I think it's where Vikings stack some wins. Raiders, Lions, twice uh, uh, Green Bay they have a chance at Cincinnati it's going to be tough but I could find a way for the Vikings to get to 10 wins squeak it out and sneak into the playoffs finally I have the Green Bay Packers at 6 and 11 and I have them missing the playoffs so let's talk about the Green Bay Packers and again I'm going to talk about the Green Bay Packers first objectively as as objectively as I possibly can right is not a diehard Bears fan. 
It's not I hate the Packers more than any other franchise in all of professional sports. Just with as much of an analyst hat as possible, let me talk about the Packers. Offensive line, solid. Aging, but solid. Weapons, okay. Christian Watson was very nice, but that was with Aaron Rodgers last year. Romeo Dobbs, nice player, but again, that was with Aaron Rodgers last year. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, very solid running back room. Don't love the tight end group. Luke Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Ben Simmons, don't love the tight end group. And then on defense, Preston Smith, sure. Quay Walker, Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, nice players. None of them are all-pro defensive player of the year type of guys. Very nice players. And then you have Jordan Love. And and let's be honest, I'm willing to sit here and tell you to bet against Jordan Love until you until he proves it to us. So we see it over an 18 game schedule, him show up and play. You know, Jordan Love is the same draft class as Tua, Joe Burrow, and um Chargers, Justin Herbert. Same draft class. Think about how much we know about all those guys and how much we have faith in what we know about those three players. And Jordan loves the same draft class, first round, was being compared to those guys. So, I, I mean, I, I, expectations have to be high. Have to be high. And I, I just, I, you look at the schedule, and I, I don't know where they're going to stack wins. Early in the year, they have some winnable games, right? At Atlanta, home against New Orleans. Can they win home against Detroit at Las Vegas? By week before going to Denver, winnable game. You know, then home against Minnesota, home against the Rams. But then they got to go to Pittsburgh. They have the Chargers at home. They're at a huge quarterback disadvantage there. At Detroit for Thanksgiving. I think that's a loss. Kansas City. The Giants, I think the Giants are a better roster and I at least know what their quarterback and offense are capable of. Winnable games down the stretch. Home against Tampa at Carolina. But Carolina, I think, will be improved late in the year. Like a lot of the rookie quarterbacks, everything, we'll know more about what they are, and that's on the road. Tampa, I think, will be in full tank mode. That's a winnable game. Uh, But then at Minnesota and then home against Chicago, two teams I absolutely think are going to be uh, in a better spots than they will record-wise who are going to be trying and battling uh, for playoff positioning. Uh, listen, I, I think the Packers, um, if I'm trying to put it in perspective with not thinking about it as just a fan, they have question marks. It's huge question marks. The offensive line is good but aging. The weapons are good, but they were. we only know them from being good with a Hall of Fame quarterback, not with a guy who sat for four years. And then a defense that has some pieces, but it's an offensive head coach. And overall, the big name stars of that defense are gone. And they're not there anymore. So, as a fan, I can't, I just want the Packers to, to blow up. I want them to implode. I want Jordan Love to look awful. So, just know I'll be rooting for that all year. I'll be rooting for it all year. So, there you go. Bears 10-7. and seven. I have not making the playoffs. You listen on the Mark News Talk 1070 KHMO. The KHMO brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai. Got to take a break. When we come back, a couple quick hitter topics to start wrapping up the show. My name is Juanita Segura, and I was diagnosed in November of 2014 with non-small cell lung cancer. The first time I heard about biomarker testing was actually my husband. He just started researching about lung cancer. And I found out about biomarker testing and I'm like, why not? Let's try it. I'm Dr. Jorge Gomez, thoracic medical oncologist at the Mount Sinai Hospital. Comprehensive biomarker testing is looking for either substances in the blood or mutations in some of the genes of the cancer cells that can help us identify special types of lung cancer that can be treated with what we call targeted therapies. Letting my children know brought all of us a sense of hope. To give them hope hope that mom is going to be around to see you grow up. And I promised them that. Ask your doctor about how comprehensive biomarker testing before treatment may help you and your doctor decide on the best treatment for you. Visit noonemiss.org for more. A public service message from Longevity Foundation. 
thought of my sons growing up without me inspired me to quit smoking. I talked to my doctors, and then I threw away all my cigarettes, ashtrays, and lighters. I started exercising instead of smoking. Getting support from friends online kept me on track. Staying away from alcohol when I was first quitting was key. Instead of smoking after I ate, I'd get up and take a walk. I missed having a cigarette in my hand, so I'd hold a pen or a straw, anything. Until I knew I wouldn't give in to temptation, I spent more time with my friends who didn't smoke. I went to places that were smoke-free. I didn't stay quit the very first time I tried. I kept on trying, and I learned something each time. Do whatever it takes. No matter how many times it takes. I quit. I quit. I quit. We did it. So can you. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and CDC. We are the Veterans Health Administration, and our hands provide life-changing care to over 9 million veterans across more than 1,200 facilities nationwide. Join hands with us to make an impact in your community. Learn more at vacareers.va.gov. Hi, this is Jason Bucks. Technology forecast from the News Talk 1070 KHMO Weather Center. Bright sunshine today with highs around 89. Southerly winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Clear skies and quiet again tonight. Lows around 63. Sunny skies and calm tomorrow. High of 92. Right now, 70. Welcome on back to On the Mark here at News Talk 1070 KHMO. And the KHMO app brought to you by Cunis Honda Hyundai, your number one Honda and Hyundai dealer in the Tri-State area, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. You got to ask them about that lifetime powertrain warranty on new and used vehicles. Tell them Mark sent you. All right, so the Ryder Cup is the end of September, USA versus Europe. And... Listen, the European, the, the Euro, Europe has some studs on their Ryder Cup. Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, the list goes on. Um, but one of the big pieces of news in sports this week was everyone clamoring that, why did Justin Thomas get picked? It's a boys club. JT got picked over, you know, Keegan Bradley and, you know, Cam Young. Oh, who cares? Justin Thomas has won a major since the last Ryder Cup. Justin Thomas has had a bad year, yes, but Justin Thomas is 6-2 and 1 in his Ryder Cup matches. He's 10-3 and 2 in his President Cup matches. The dude is a gamer. And if Justin Thomas bombs in this Ryder Cup like he bombed all season long and is not good, well then you can say, "All right. Now you no longer get to rest on your laurels. We gave you a chance to just prove you're still a gamer and you should represent the country in these biggest moments." But if you have a slump year and you're bad, then you got to earn your spot in the Ryder Cup in future Ryder Cups. I don't see why that's a problem. I also just love the vibes of putting JT on this team with Scotty Scheffler, with, you know, uh, Max Homa, his guys, Ricky Fowler, Colin Morikawa, Jordan Spieth, Brooks Kepka. I can't wait to watch the Ryder Cup. I always think it's one of those fun, really amazing things to do during football season. There's not a lot during football season I say, oh, you should watch. The Ryder Cup is one of those things. Keep some eyeballs on it at the end of September, early October. Uh, go Team USA. We'll talk more about it as it gets closer. But absolutely, I'm 100% comfortable with Justin Thomas being on the team, even though he's had a down year and maybe someone earned it more. Guy won a major since the last Ryder Cup two years ago, and he is a gamer in the Ryder Cups. When we come back, wrapping up the show with a couple quick hitters, live and local, Mornings of Market Sam on 97.9 Kick FM. Actually, wrong thing. On the mark on News Talk 1070K at Jamo. Gosh, my brain. I noticed that my central vision started to blur. The figures that are usually straight started to distort to become wavy. What are these little dark spots with blurring that I'm seeing? There's a blind spot like a blob over my vision now. Is my vision lost forever? Why did I wait so long to see a retina specialist? Retinal disease can steal your eyesight, but it doesn't have to. Patients who seek care from a retina specialist in a timely manner have the best chance of preventing vision loss due to age-related macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. AMD symptoms to look out for are distortion or warping of straight lines, as well as blurred or loss of central vision. Patients with diabetic retinopathy should seek treatment if they notice the appearance of spots or floaters or blurred and distorted vision. Don't delay seeing a retina specialist. It's worth the visit to save your vision so you don't miss out on life's precious moments, like seeing your grandchild grow up, enjoying a sunset with that special someone, or reading a good book. Visit seeforalifetime.org. 
Every two minutes, a woman in the U.S. is diagnosed with breast cancer. And in that split-second moment in time, her life changes forever. The toll of breast cancer is great. The need to support those who are battling the disease today is even greater. And that's why when others look away, Susan G. Komen leans in. We're fighting alongside patients because we know one moment can change a lifetime. Fighting breast cancer takes funding for research to discover the next new treatment, providing access to quality and affordable health care, and people willing to take action by raising funds and raising their voice to advocate for others. United by hope, we can end breast cancer. Join our fight. Save lives. 1070 KHMO. Welcome on back to On the Mark here on News Talk 1070 KHMO and the KHMO. I brought to you by Cunis on Hyundai, the buying center of the Tri-States. If they're selling, if you're selling, they're buying. Stop by the dealership, 221 North 36th Street in Quincy. Tell them Mark sent you. Shop Cunis.com. All right, college football week one officially a go. But the big story yesterday, the ACC officially adds Stanford, Cal, and SMU starting next year. I will say this about the ACC adding Stanford, Cal, and SMU. The ACC has now put themselves in a position to survive. And what I mean by that is the Big 12 was smarter than the Pac-12, and they put themselves in the position to survive. Florida State, Miami, Clemson, North Carolina, I think they will leave the ACC eventually because of football. I think they'll get picked up by Big Ten and SEC uh, programs, and they'll be gone. But what by adding these teams, it allows the ACC to still just survive as a conference. Like the Big 12 has survived with, all right, they have some programs. They have some dudes. They have some some names to where um, – they could sneak a, a team or two into the a college football play if they deserve an automatic bid, and they'll battle with the Big 12 for that third best conference title. And I think that's a, a smart thing for them to have done. They have they have now assured themselves some survival, even when their top three or four schools eventually leave ship for the SEC and the Big Ten, which they will, just a matter of time. So congrats to the ACC. The Pac-12 was the one who got squeezed out. The Pac-12 died. One of them wasn't going to live. The Big 12 made the first smart moves after Texas and Oklahoma. The ACC has reacted in this way and getting desperate and taking in the leftover junk from the Pac-12 to make sure they don't get completely Pac-12'd. And the Pac-12 is dead. Big 10 and SEC, two dominance. Big 12, ACC, are those battle for that third tier level with some both program both conferences have some really solid schools. All right, um, college football week one. Shout out to my Huskies against Boston College. Go upset the Boston College. Go beat the Eagles. That'll be really fun. Hopefully, rooting for an NIU bounce back here. Um, you have primetime Deion Sanders versus Colorado. On uh, uh, Colorado versus number seventeen TCU today. Number three Ohio State at Indiana. West Virginia at number seven, Penn State, UNC number twenty-one versus South Carolina. Nice inter, uh, you know, cross-state rivalry game. SEC versus a, a a ranked ACC school, and then Sunday's the big game: LSU number five at Florida State number eight. It's the only ranked top twenty-five matchup that we get. I will say this: College football needs a better schedule maker. Like someone's got to put the schedule together for college football. Because you should have nothing but big matchups this weekend to get people hyped about college football so then you don't completely get drowned out by the NFL the rest of the year. Like, give give some big matchups. I know no one wants to start 0-1 because it feels like you're dead, but with the playoff expanding and everything, it's just not going to be the case anymore. Uh, but LSU Florida State tomorrow night will be a big one. That'll be fun to watch. And I can't wait for, actually, UNC South Carolina. Can Drake May in a ranked ACC school stay and start the season against a mid-level SEC power. Uh, finally, next time we talk, the Chiefs and the Lions will have played an NFL football game. Stay tuned to On the Mark social media, On the Mark KHMO on Facebook, and 
Mark Hespin on Twitter, at Mark Hespin. I'll give you picks. I'll give you gambling picks. I'll make a prediction. I'll lay out all my playoff rankings and all that stuff. So enjoy it. Can't wait. Enjoy your weekend Labor Day. Have a good one. Take command of Pro 